Welcome to CYF Spotlight, presented by the Commission on Children, Youth and Families. The Commission is a joint effort between the City of Farmington Hills and the City of Farmington. Its purpose is to foster a healthier community by focusing on our most precious resources, our children and our families. The Commission is made up of dedicated volunteers and community activists from all walks of life. Working together with other groups and agencies in the community, the Commission creates programs with one goal, to encourage a supportive environment where children, youth, and families are happy, healthy, educated, and safe, and have the opportunity to reach their full potential. The Commission is hosting this show to bring our focus and activities to the community. We welcome your input and support. You can learn more about our commission at our website, www.cyf.us. On today's CYF Spotlight, we are going to talk about special needs children. I have with me today Gabriella Berman, who is an advocate and a parent of a special needs child. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. So in the United States, special needs is a term used in a clinical diagnostic fashion to describe individuals who require assistance for disabilities that could be mental, um, medical, psychological. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you see the definition of special needs, Gabby. Typically, I think people use it when referring to someone who needs help with an aspect of daily living. Okay. Um, for someone with fine motor um, issues, they may need help dressing, feeding themselves, that sort of thing. Um, but I hate labels. Sure. And um, it's very important to use language, um, a child or an adult with special needs, with a disability, a person who uses a wheelchair, and never to put the modifier in front of the person. Um, because then it limits them, right? Yeah, it limits them and it limits you and, uh, and you, how you see them. Sure. It closes your eyes before you even get to know the person. Well, so. that perception is such an important characteristic and we right. should be aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's children or adults, mm -hmm. that people are people and right. the, the possibilities are infinite That's if we right. let them be, if right. we believe that. Right. So I understand that you are the mother of three wonderful girls <laughs> um, and your oldest daughter, Michaela, mm -hmm. had special needs. Yes. Would you like to tell us about her? Sure. Um, yesterday would have been her ninth birthday and um, she was born with a brain injury to her basal ganglion thalamus, which is the motor center. Um, you learn a lot quickly about neurology when you're born with, when you give birth to a child with special needs. Um, in other words, sensory input went in and wasn't spit out in ways that we all take for granted. Um, she didn't have easy control over her muscle movement. Um, so um, she had cerebral palsy, that was the diagnosis, and that's a motor disorder that can affect you minimally to severely, it can affect one side of the body or one limb, or it can affect um, all four limbs. In her case, it did affect all four limbs as well as her ability to speak. Mm -hmm. So while she never made the physical gains and reached the milestones that we all typically um, you know, think of when we think of a child's development, um, and I threw out my parenting books almost as soon as I <laughs> brought her home from the hospital. Probably the smartest um, move you could have yeah. made, right? Um, she, um, she nevertheless thrived, thrived and had an incredible personality, was very aware of her surroundings and communicated in her own way mm -hmm. via the minimal movements that she did make mm -hmm. and the sounds that she was able to make. And we immersed ourselves um, by necessity um, and helping her fulfill her potential in every way, educationally, therapeutically, medically, recreationally. And we, um, we encountered a community of caregivers and people working with the disabled that just absolutely radically changed our worldview. Really? And changed who we were as people and as parents, for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of parents, um, there are a variety of reactions mm -hmm. that you could have. Mm -hmm. um, some parents wouldn't embrace their challenges. Mm -hmm. Even when a child is born without mm -hmm. a disability, um, the, the mere challenge of raising a child mm -hmm. is huge. Mm -hmm. And yet you add other layers to it and it mm -hmm. becomes, it, it's a difficult job mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the biggest hurdles that parents of mm -hmm. children with special needs might face? Practically speaking, um, 
you have to become an advocate and you have to learn how to ask questions immediately from the get-go. That's the only way your child is going to receive the services and opportunities that he or she deserves. Um, you have to find the right school setting. So you have to do a lot of research that way. You have to find the right medical interventions and complementary therapies that, um, that your child may benefit from. So you have to do all of this over and above just running your household and perhaps going to work. A lot of people have to modify their homes mm. um, to, you know, to make them accessible for someone who perhaps doesn't walk. Mm -hmm. um, bathrooms, kitchens, you know, hallways all have to be you know, widened. And um, you may need to build a ramp outside uh -huh. your home for your child to get you know, inside and out. And so there are structural changes that go on, there are emotional changes that go on. Obviously that child gets so much attention and you have to be very, very cognizant of the needs of the other children. What's interesting about special needs siblings is that they become very resilient and independent, but they also sometimes feel um, a little hostile or mm -hmm. left out. Um, sure. I've heard stories where parents have taken, and we did this with Michaela, we would travel with her to see specialists all over the country, and we would leave behind the younger children. And many times the younger children just see that you're taking a trip alone with the kid, and that's right. so fun, you're going on an airplane or a car trip, and they want that for themselves, but they don't understand that you're not taking this trip for pleasure. It's not Disneyland. No, it's not, <laughs> and you have to really, as hard as it is, you have to try and balance the attention that you give to the needs of the special needs child as well as just acting as a family, a regular family. There were so many times when I could have been doing therapy with Michaela and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to be her mom today. I'm not her therapist. Let's leave it alone sure. and let's just cuddle on the couch and read books, yeah. everyone together. It's and so those important. moments are just, you know, precious. Absolutely. So, One day at a time. Yeah. Where did you find your biggest help? <laughs> My parents, mm -hmm. um, for sure. Um, we actually moved. We had been living in Atlanta, Georgia, when Michael was born, and we moved to Detroit mm -hmm. to, um, to be close to my parents because it was with their support that we were able to do all the things that I just enumerated. Sure. Um, if you don't have a parent that you can rely on, you can find sources of support um, among other special needs parents hopefully among your child's teachers and the parent community that you involve yourself in. Um, there are organizations that exist in every county to provide assistance. You can be assigned a social worker who can do some of this legwork for you, finding programs and grant money and all kinds of things that you might need to help your child uh, reach his or her potential. Mm -hmm. Therapists, it all becomes, it's like your child is the center of a bicycle wheel and there's all these spokes that emanate out of it and mm -hmm. it's everyone is connected mm -hmm. by this love for the child and you become kind of an extended family. It's sure. really more than the blood relatives even. You come to rely and depend upon and love you know, everyone who's involved in raising your child. I mean, sure. it really does take a village to raise all children and particularly special needs children. I mean, you have therapists coming in and out of your home or you're going to appointments and you keep these routines and you see these people in your lives for years and years and they really become members of your family and they provide them a lot of emotional support. It's Absolutely. really wonderful. That's so great. Yeah. Um, so you have told me a little bit about um, that schools are prepared for students mm -hmm. with special needs. What have you found in the school system? Well, first of all, Michigan is a great state because they, um, we educate children until age 26 here. Oh. Children with special needs are entitled to a public education until the age of 26, which Beautiful. is so fabulous. First of all, children with disabilities need to be in school. I'm a very strong believer that they belong in school and not to be secluded because the whole point is to normalize society to accept children with mm -hmm. disabilities and to create communities where all learners are learning together because sure. we can learn so much from one another. Right. And so our public schools are equipped um, to handle children with all kinds of needs, children on the autistic spectrum, children with physical disabilities, people with cognitive disabilities. Um, for educational purposes, the child does receive a label so that mm -hmm. they go into the appropriate classroom for them within this public school setting. And you can, you know, maneuver that as necessary if you need to with IEPs. Every child gets an individualized educational plan and the schools are held accountable to meet and exceed the goals that are set out each school year Beautiful. for the child. And um, again, it's a group, it's a group effort. Sure. 
That's yeah, great. but I really encourage parents to do the homework. If you're not happy with the school that's in your district, you know, meet with the superintendent, meet again, get um, a lawyer to come and help you, sure. whatever it takes you know, to find that your child can succeed in the school setting. I hate when I hear stories of parents who are really like, I'm going to homeschool my kid because oh. it's just they're not getting what they need in the school system. Right, you right. know, it's every child's right to be educated at school. It's the true. peer factor is also very important. Children yeah. need to be socialized and to be around other other children, other children yes. both able-bodied and non-able-bodied. Right, right. And we do have the option in a lot of places of schools of choice. And so if mm -hmm your school isn't meeting your needs, there may be another mm -hmm. option too right. within the public system. Right. What about government programs to help parents of children with special needs? They exist. Um, some are more bureaucratic than others, of course, but there are um, community mental health organizations throughout Michigan that, um, that advocate for the needs of special needs children and adolescents and young adults. There are a lot of workplace incentive programs out there. Mm -hmm. um, there are um, organizations that provide respite care for parents. Okay. Um, we'll bring in a care a, a caregiver to give the parents a break because sure. that's something that has to be taken into account. I always counsel parents, you know, try to find one hour uh -huh. every other day, uh -huh. not even every day, to exercise or to just do something for yourself. Sure. It's so hard. It can be so fraught with frustration. You work so hard as a special needs parent to help your child make strides and sometimes and they're each on their own path and that's then it doesn't come quickly some children you know move much quite quicker with therapy than others it, it, they don't right. and as hard as you try they may never get where you would like them to be mm -hmm. or where they would like for themselves to be and you have to just you know yoga worked for <laughs> me you have to find a way to just you know clear out your your emotional state so that you sure. have the strength physical and <clears throat> mental strength to to go you know to parent the right way and physically for children who need to be carried a lot in right. and out or transferred out and you know in and out of wheelchairs as they get heavier if your back goes what happens what well, good are you to your child right so right. I really I really I really <clears throat> think that um whatever parents can do to stay healthy themselves is sure. very important. That question of balance is really essential for any yeah. family structure, yeah. but add in challenges and mm -hmm. it's that much more important, yeah. it really is. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned support groups for parents. Mm -hmm. There are local support groups that you found to be useful? Mm -hmm. yeah. There are, um, you know, schools can spontaneously, you know, be a support group when you, you know, interact with the other parents and mm -hmm. you learn best practices by having conversations with other with other parents. I learned about the school that my daughter ended up going to from another parent who we met at therapy while you're sitting and waiting while your child's working you know their butt off. Uh -huh. You have time to sit and con converse with other parents and I learned about the school that I eventually wanted my child to go to. Um, and all sorts of things like that. You learn about therapies or doctors doing interesting research by talking with other people. Okay. Yeah. And also you can commiserate. Yes, I'm yes. feeling the same thing yes. you are. I'm not alone yes. in this. Yes. And my feelings are normal and yes. doesn't make me a bad parent. That's right. I'm just human, right? Absolutely. It's important to remember that. <laughs> right. One of the things, and we've known each other a long time, mm -hmm. and one of the things that um, I always think of when I think of you and your husband, Adam, mm -hmm. um, is how um, the birth of your child mm -hmm. really did transform your lives. Mm -hmm. And sort of, um, as I mentioned earlier, you don't know the path you're on until you're on it. Mm -hmm. And then it takes you and you realize you can contribute um, not only to the life of your child mm -hmm. but to maybe to the lives of other children or society mm -hmm. in a meaningful way and I know that um, you have formed together a mm -hmm. business called mm -hmm. Big Tent Jobs mm -hmm. can you tell me a little bit about that sure Big Tent Jobs is a recruiting <coughs> firm we place technical talent um, in career positions at leading companies throughout Southeast Michigan and beyond um, IT is where it's at as we go forward in this advanced manufacturing and global, you know, 21st century economy. That's where, those are the skill sets that employers are looking for. And um, we recruit actively job seekers who have disabilities that may be visible or invisible and also medical, you know, chronic conditions. And our goal is to improve the employment rate for people with disabilities in this okay. country. There's about 
two-thirds more people with disabilities who are not working as okay. compared to the able-bodied working age population. And why is that? Is that because workplaces shy away from taking on someone who might have some challenges that they I, know about? I think that we call it the hidden talent pool. I think a lot of hiring managers are just not yet really aware mm -hmm. that this is a, a pool that they should be recruiting from. Okay. Um, in many cases, people with disabilities will stay in school longer mm -hmm. to perhaps avoid mm. the, um, the pitfalls of looking for sure. a job in this economy, sure. as do many able-bodied young people. Sure. And, um, and their retention rate sometimes is not as great because they get passed over oh. for promotions. Oh. They kind of get stuck sometimes in a position and because of the disability that's being seen mm -hmm. first, unfortunately, their capabilities are perceived as perhaps being limited. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're out to change that. Great. You're going to change yeah. our world, aren't you? Yeah, well, it's wonderful. One, one job at a one time. One job at a time. How many people have you helped at this point? Any oh, my goodness. Dozens and yeah. dozens. Yeah. 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 We're always, we've got people in the pipeline going on interviews all the time, and it's really, it's, 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 we get calls from all over the country. That's fabulous. You know, there are people in Hawaii who are like, open an office here. We, you know, we need oh, you. It's great. really, um, it's fabulous. And it creates community also, mm -hmm. you know. That's so. wonderful. Now, if there's a business that would like to be in touch with you <laughs> for your talent pool, how would they reach Big Tent Jobs? Well, of course, we have a website. Okay. <laughs> um, BigTentJobs.com. Okay. And, um, you know, the contact information is there. You can submit your resume right online, online on okay. the website. And if you're a company looking for you know someone for a position to fill you can post your job okay also and um, be in touch with Adam okay Kaplan the founder and CEO okay and he is very good he has very high touch interactions with people throughout the process and he really makes sure that accommodations are made beforehand so everyone you know hits the floor running sure to ensure success because we don't want to have to place you in another job. <laughs> right, right. We want success rates, right? right. So. Um, is there any closing advice that you can offer to parents of children with special needs? Anything that we haven't touched on today? Um, I would just go back to what you said about how having Michael invigorated us. And I would say that that's absolutely true. Um, personally, she gave me a, a razor sharp focus that had previously been absent in my life. And while practically there are a lot of hardships associated with especially financial with raising a special needs child on an existential level it's the most elevated existence you could ask for yourself and for your family and um, it's, it's the gift that keeps on giving even mm -hmm. though she's passed away we still remain deeply involved in mm -hmm. the community of people who work with and and support people with disabilities and we wouldn't want to be anywhere else yeah. and it's just um, it's it's kind of an imperative that able-bodied people engage with people who have disabilities. It enriches everyone's lives. Absolutely. That personal touch and interaction yeah. is what makes a community what it is, right. and we all need to support each right. other and, um, and have those eyes wide open mm -hmm. that everybody is lovable and beautiful and can enrich our lives and mm -hmm. we can enrich theirs. Exactly. Thank you so much for being with us today on the CYF Spotlight, and thank you very much for watching.